advantage of following Jesus but the advantage of following models patterns and references to Jesus be all the glory in Jesus name we pray you are indeed feelings can be deceptive and are not an accurate measure of love are feelings wrong no are emotions wrong no but our society many of you seated today looking at me are depending on a feeling to show you your wife you are depending on a feeling to show you your husband you are depending on a feeling to love your wife if you're married or a feeling to love your husband you are depending on a feeling to serve god you are depending on a feeling to believe that you are loved in your department you are be, you are depending on a feeling feelings are deceptive very deceptive before i tell you what love is I want to show you a scripture that blessed me dimensions of true love let's discuss that Ephesians chapter 3 please from verse 17 and 18 it's amazing how Paul gives us his exegesis on the subject of love very strange communication that came from Paul and let's see what he's saying Paul said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith look at me listen that ye being rooted and grounded in love now Paul is confusing us here Paul is giving us an idea you know he's using agricultural terminologies but this is not where I'm going verse 18 it says may be able to comprehend with all the saints read on with me what is the number one the breath number two the length number three the depth number four the height so love has these dimensions there is breath there is length there is depth there is height have you experienced these dimensions in your definition of what you call love if i ask you what is the breath of love and when should it be used because it's in the Bible if I ask you what is the length of love and when should it be used because all these dimensions have their relevance remember he's teaching us to grow in the fullness of God who is love and he's fragmenting this dimensionally and he's saying that love has breadth and length and depth and height which one of the four do you know when you say love which of them do you refer to my brother when you say i love that lady which of this is it the breath the length the depth when you say i love jesus which of them because paul is saying if that thing you are doing or no is love it must have breath listen carefully it must have length it must have depth thank you media it must have height believers love us remember we love god and love ourselves what is the name of what we have been doing with respect to this i love you i love my car and paul says that thing you are talking there are dimensions the first dimension write it down i want to give you the four dimensions the lord revealed this to me and it changed my life it really did if these four dimensions are not captured in your idea of love then never talk about it these four dimensions i'm about to describe for you if they are not captured all four must be captured for it to be called love three over four in this equation is still f it must be four over four to be called God's idea the dimensions of love ready number one passion the first dimension of love is passion there is no love if it cannot be expressed in passion that's why I told you that there is a place for feelings 
it's only that feelings is not the entire scope please follow me in this teaching god is going to be revealing to many of us the mistakes we have been making whether in love relationships even in marriages and our work with god and businesses and relationship among believers around passion what is passion a strong or extravagant fondness of something when you are strongly fond of something it can be said you are passionate about that person or that thing what is passion sorry i'll hurry up you can get the teachings enthusiasm or desire for someone or something your passion for a person or a thing is measured by your enthusiasm your desire for something you cannot say you love a person or you love a thing and intrinsically there is no desire passion is called an intense enthusiasm compelling desire even admiration qualifies to be called passion write this down the proof that you are passionate about a person or a thing is pursuit 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 is anyone with ten thousand dollars or more in credit card debt or personal loans may the proof of passion when you love someone and you love something you are willing to be vulnerable enough to pursue that personality to pursue that idea there cannot be passion when there is an ashamedness for pursuit towards God, towards men. There are many relationships and many marriages, many business ideas that do not have passion attached. So the individuals, they may say that they love this um, line of business. But I do not see pursuit. They may say, I love this lady, I love this guy, but there is no desire for pursuit. Many say, I love Jesus, I love the things of God, but there is no pursuit. The first dimension of love that must be at work in your life is pursuit. Psalm 8, please, quickly. Let's look at God Himself demonstrating this dimension of love psalm 8 and verse 3 this is the psalmist in shock and awe as to why the god of the heavens with all the dexterity of heaven will still look down at man remember the bible said for god so loved the world i have loved you we are not studying love from any relationship expert we are studying love directly from the one who invented it himself because many people have carved out i have great honor and respect for people authorities that god has used in the area of love and relationship but there is a deception that is destroying the body of christ every angry person comes up with a book and any idea of what they believe and begin to mentor young guys and young ladies and we are destroying marriage visions dreams relationships because of wrong templates that have been communicated so let's go to God how did God express passion this is what the psalmist saw that made him wonder he said God is it that you cannot do without man you threw your pride on the ground your throne is not enough for you you look at a man that is so godless and doesn't love you he said when i consider the heavens do you know what he's saying lord you are not dull you made the heavens without pillars the works of your fingers can't you invent another thing to replace that man the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained verse 4 we're reading to verse 5 what is man 
that thou art change mindful to passionate ready what is man that thou art passionate not the son of man that you prove you are passionate by doing what visiting him you leave your throne you are not even considering whether people will say how about god you are too big for this childishness he said no problem say whatever you say about me i am in love with that man and the first dimension is my passion i am not ashamed let's go back to our world of proud and arrogant people where a guy claims he loves a lady but he is still protecting his vulnerability you are not passionate you are not in love where somebody claims he loves a business he loves his idea i love this i love that i am a businessman and you are not serious i don't see you wake up in the night to read any book i don't see you go for any seminar you are not passionate you do not love it the first dimension of love is measured by your passion and your passion measured by your willingness to pursue without being embarrassed anything that shame will not let you pursue don't even start shame and love doesn't go hand in hand no matter who you are in the world of God's idea of love you must be willing to throw shame down to pursue a person an idea or pursue God when we were sitting here and the worship team were praising I saw a Jimmy got up and he was dancing unashamedly is a proof of passion is that true listen be careful whenever someone says he loves you or she loves you or you think you love someone before you make a shipwreck of your life because of ignorance ask yourself question number one am I willing to be vulnerable enough to pursue I have loved you with an everlasting love and my everlasting love was demonstrated by my being mindful Lord there are many things to distract you in heaven the beauty of heaven the throne room the four and twenty elders and after he watches that orchestra in heaven all of a sudden they find God thinking and the elders can wonder God what again and he says man sin too here is the stubborn and careless man roaming around trying to make a, a an image and bow to him and the angel said george now george god you are wise your child needs these three factors and he says no i'm not ashamed that as great as i am god is a weak point man has gotten this is god listen don't ever marry anybody who doesn't have this thing i'm telling you big manism and passion cannot go hand in hand show me what wakes you in the night and i know whether that idea is worth your love what wakes you up you snore by 10 and wake up by 11 say i'm an entrepreneur it's not for you it's very clear that you don't have passion for that thing you can try other aspects of life lord i love you and you are praying and then fall asleep and sleep for 10 hours no when you are mindful of anything there is passion there is god helping us tonight learn this this is the spirit of wisdom speaking to you we use words carelessly and do not understand the gravity of what we are saying lord i love you he says which dimension is that dimension number one i love you i am passionate towards you I am not ashamed of my vulnerability. Oh, David showed us what passion was. He danced before God and the wife said, Ah, ah, oh king, again, were you not trained well? David said, God, that took me from the badness to give your time, the willingness to give your energy, the willingness to give yourself to something or someone you believe in. It's called commitment the willingness to give your time the willingness to give yourself passion talks of pursuit the unashamedness to remain mindful of a thing 
but commitment talks of the staying power brothers and sisters there is no emotion to commitment commitment is a product of your belief in a thing staying power based on the fact that you believe so you can see a believer being persecuted and they are going to set fire on him and he's willing lord i remain with you denounce jesus christ or die is is there any pleasure there no sir listen to me commitment is a state or quality of being dedicated another synonym for commitment is dedication i know how committed you are to a person or a thing by dedication i wrote a definition that when i finished writing i finished writing it i just leaned my head and i took a deep breath and i said god this is serious hear this the third definition of commitment is an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action hi you must write everything let me say it again an engagement or obligation to someone or something that restricts freedom of action look at this kind of dangerous definition so there is a restriction that commitment can create to your life mm. the love of God constraints constraints there are actions that are restricted because of commitment you have options you can sleep you have options you can travel you have options you can go for vacation but your commitment for your vision because you believe that if you're committed to that vision your children will eat from it so you stay and they look at you and say ah david damn what is this that you are playing the keyboard 2 a.m 2 a.m you are tired you say it's true it's obvious your eyes are teary but something else has obsessed you more than the discomfort you are having commitment there are many believers who are not committed to anything there are many young people who are not committed to anything and anyone we run away from commitment i'm a member of koinonia but i don't want to join any workforce that's how i am do you know why because the restriction that commitment brings is what we are afraid of restriction hmm. is god blessing us number three let's hurry up the third dimension to love when we get to the fourth dimension you give us that scripture again in ephesians the third dimension to love is pleasure write it down if you must manifest true love it must be captured this dimension pleasure what is pleasure delight gratification there must be delight there must be space for gratification what is pleasure the satisfaction derived from what is to one's liking it cannot be a war of pain and regrets and fighting and pursuit indefinitely no there is a dimension to love that is defined by pleasure psalm 16 verse 11 let me tell you something that is very interesting about love personified here's what the bible says 16 verse 11 psalms are we there it says thou will show me the path of life ready in your presence is what fullness of joy and then he didn't say in the hand of a 24 elder at your right hand are what for how long if your definition of love is all about pain and fight and if there is no capture of the dimension of pleasure then you are not defining love based on God's terms is God speaking to us yes 
whether it is a love relationship whether it is a business relationship i should come and see you working on a difficult project with a smile on your face and i should say ah, ah, but i'm aware this thing is hard you mean you have to count these things one by one and there are five thousand of them and you say even me i don't know why this thing gives me joy my brother continue that's a sign that there is love there there are many things we do and we are angry and